products of the horse industry. And now, Horse Talk Live. Hey everybody, thanks for coming to join us for another episode of Horse Talk Live on Rural TV. I'm Lizzie Iwerson and we have a great guest today, Dr. Megan Wintermeyer, who is an acupuncture expert as well as a veterinarian. So we're going to really get to spend a lot of time learning what acupuncture is uh, when it comes to helping you and your horses. Uh, it's great that we have this full hour because there's a lot that goes into acupuncture. And for someone like me that didn't know much about it, we, um, we definitely have a great guest and expert to shed some light. So, Dr. Wintermeyer, thanks so much for being here. Well, I am happy to be here. I love talking about acupuncture. Great, because that's what we're going to do. And we've got a full hour to do it. You've got some video that you brought along with you um, to show people how you are um, treating horses. Yeah. And, um, well, let's find out, first of all, about you. You're a veterinarian, and then you decided you wanted to enhance your veterinary practices with acupuncture? So first I'll tell you how I became interested in acupuncture. I went to uh, The Ohio State University uh, Veterinary School then I moved to Texas to practice and at that practice there was a veterinarian who uh, exclusively did acupuncture and chiropractic and I was a huge skeptic and I watched him work on cases, and I said, oh, how neat, what a neat coincidence. <laughs> and then I watched him work on another case, and I said, oh, how neat, what a neat coincidence. And then I was working in the ICU, and there was a horse, and I can't tell you for what reason, but he could not urinate. And I'm not kidding, uh, Dr. Simpson, Dr. James Simpson, hooked up the acupuncture needles, hooked up the electroacupuncture unit, and the horse started to urinate for the first time. And I thought, hmm, maybe there, maybe there really is something to this acupuncture thing. And the second thing was I suffered from chronic headaches uh -huh. and I was told where to stick the acupuncture needles. And I'm not joking, I put the acupuncture needle in and my headache went away instantly. So that's how I first became introduced and interested in acupuncture. Okay. So then I decided to go to the renowned Chi Institute in Reddick, Florida, where I learned from Dr. Shea, who teaches traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, not just acupuncture. Okay. And was everybody there with you? Are they all veterinarians? Or? You, you have to be a licensed veterinarian. And the interesting thing is, is not everyone's from the United States. People from around the world travel to the Chi Institute to learn acupuncture from Dr. Shea. Okay, so yeah. you were already a practicing vet and then decided and to And then go decided, to correct. How long is the school? What was your um, curriculum like? The school is seven months. It is pretty rigorous because you are a veterinarian. You're practicing every day. They expect you to study um, the Chinese physiology, you learn the diagnostic points, uh, learn all the acupuncture points. There's online modules and there are on-site classes. Okay. So, and uh, so nowadays, you um, Silverleaf Equine Services is your practice. Yes, I founded Silverleaf Equine Services. My husband's family is, from, is in Tennessee, so we relocated. Okay. And so I'm in Central Tennessee, and I started my own practice. And I have probably 80% caseload is acupuncture. And I also do traditional veterinary work where it's hoof abscesses and laminitis and castrations and dentals. But my main focus is acupuncture. Okay. So if somebody in our area, in the Middle Tennessee area, needed a vet, and also maybe interested in acupuncture, then and they've got both. And it and that does happen. I've been called out for a laminate case, and I scan all of my horses regardless. And while I was there, the owner said, "Huh, I have another horse I want you to look at." So the laminate case I treated conventionally, but then uh, she had a horse that had severe soft tissue hip problems, and I treated with acupuncture that day. So you never know how your day's going to go. So. What typically are some issues or reasons that a person would call you to perform acupuncture on their horse? The easiest cases to treat with acupuncture are the musculoskeletal, um, for example, tendon ligament problems, back soreness, um, soft tissue hip problems, hock problems, stifle hop 
problems. The, the horses that they've had their stifles and their hocks injected, and two weeks later the horses are better, but they still have 20% back, uh, are off. Okay. Um, chronic heel pain, navicular pain. Um, and then what about this case that we see up here? This is a good before and after. Okay, so this case, this poor owner has suffered. This is a lymphedema. This horse was treated by the top veterinarians in the area for on and off for three years and had negative biopsy results, was on steroids, antibiotics, hydrotherapy, walking, um, and nothing was helping this horse. This horse was depressed. He was not eating. 24-year-old thoroughbred off the track. The owner cared very much for him and just wanted him to feel better and his leg to go down. And I went out there. I did the traditional uh, traditional Chinese veterinary medical exam mm -hmm. and did one acupuncture session with no herbs. And one week later, we have a, an image of him, and okay. his leg was reduced in size, I would say, by half. Holy cow. So, so that was just after... So that's just one treatment. And like I said, this horse, this is an older horse. He had multiple problems. So I did end up treating this horse for, um, for five weeks on nearly a weekly basis. And after his acupuncture treatments, he was eating. He was walking and running his pasture, rolling around, happy. The owner <laughs> was, was very pleased with the results. So. so typically, is it one treatment, multiple treatments? And it's really hard. Everyone hates this, but the answer is always it depends. Okay. It depends on what's going on with the animal. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, um, when instantly do you see a little bit of a result, or does it take a while? It can take 24 to 72 hours. There are really neat instances where a horse can have chronic back pain, and I can stick an acupuncture needle in its hind foot or near its eye, and the back pain will go away instantly. But typically, the results are within 72 hours, you can see changes. Um, but on the, the typical case, I say give me three treatments before we give up. Oh, okay. So, All right. Um, well, we have some photos that we're going to play while we're talking here to show people what acupuncture looks like when it comes to uh, treating a horse. Okay. And um, this is something that you obviously have spent a lot of time perfecting. It's something we want to make sure people don't go home and just stick needles in their horses. Yes, yes absolutely. Um, but, uh, I mean, these the images that we see here, uh, there's a few different types of acupuncture we're going to look at. Yeah, so um, there are four main types. There's electroacupuncture. That's an example of dry needle acupuncture. And uh, and all of the sites, the needle sites, are specific. They you're are. not just guessing. Here. You are absolutely not guessing if you're guessing. <laughs> you're probably... It's close, acu or close puncture, not acupuncture, uh, <laughs> which might be effective in a placebo effect. There are also trigger point therapies, which is called ashi points. So horses that if you press on a spot uh, and they are sensitive, it's not actually an acupuncture point, but they're called ashi points, and they are, uh, you can treat them for, for those trigger points. So... A lot of times, you know, we hear a lot of human medicine using acupuncture. How long has acupuncture been used on animals or horses? It's been documented for 3,000 years, but 650 B.C., there's a gentleman who was working on the emperor's horses, um, and basically the Chinese progressed over time. They didn't believe in dissecting the horses, so they or humans. So they would find a spot on the animal or the horse and they would see how it affected the body and they would write it down and um, from there would use it as a treatment point. Okay. Ultimately to relieve pain. Ultimately to relieve pain and to treat certain conditions. Okay. Yes. So in relieving pain, do are most of your clients using um, or use their horses for competition and that's why they choose acupuncture to relieve that pain so their horse can perform better or there's there's a wide spectrum of people using this. Um, 
barrel horses who are nervous before they get to the gate, acupuncture might be good for behavior. Okay. Uh, they also might have the hind end pain because they are asked to move so much off their hind end. So acupuncture could be used for a combination for those horses. The dressage horses, the high end horses who are testing and cannot use any uh, performance or NSAIDs, mm -hmm. uh, acupuncture is the only pain relief that they can get. The backyard owner who really loves their animal and just doesn't want them to be in pain, those yeah. are owners who are using it. Uh, performance horses who have um, who have tried everything else. Okay, those are wonderful cases for for the TCVM therapy, acupuncture, and herbal therapy, because Western or conventional medicine they've done and exhausted everything they can, so now they're going to acupuncture. Okay, so it can be used in conjunction a lot of times with traditional or conventional absolutely medicine absolutely okay well we're gonna take a quick break we come back we're gonna get a little bit further in depth and show you um, dr. Wintermeyer working on a horse and uh, she'll walk us through it tell us what we're seeing there and ultimately find out how it can relieve pain um, help some behavioral issues things like that in a number or variety of horses so stick around we'll be back with more on horse talk live Welcome back, everybody. Today, our guest is Dr. Megan Wintermeyer. Megan and I met each other not too long ago at a uh, Grand Prix event in Middle Tennessee. Um, our Grand Prix, are you working on, you know, those type of horses, jumping horses, as well as Western discipline horses? Absolutely. Everything from dressage horses, Grand Prix horses, uh, Tennessee walking horses, mm -hmm. backyard pleasure horses, uh, trail horses. So it. pretty much any horse can benefit from acupuncture. Absol absolutely. Now what about, uh, this was one question I had. I don't necessarily see anything really wrong with my horses. Um, would it be a good therapy or treatment for them, even if there's nothing necessarily specifically acutely wrong? Can it benefit any horse? Well, my response is, is that if I scanned your horse and I saw something wrong, I would tell you. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't see anything wrong, I wouldn't treat your horse. Okay. I might recommend um, possibly an herbal supplement to help him if I see that he is a non-sweater or something that you haven't possibly picked up on. Okay. But if there's yeah. nothing going on, it's not a, a therapy that I would just willy-nilly throw on every horse. Okay. Yes. And so it does necessitate an overall um, scan of the horse and right. you evaluate right. that horse before you start right. um, so treating. So before I treat my horses, I do, a, first of all, as I ask the owner exactly what's been going on, just as a conventional veterinarian, I want to know if the horse is still eating, how is he doing uh, under saddle, everything your normal veterinarian would ask. And then I would look at its tongue I would check its pulses, I would feel its back, I would get what's called beyond zing in uh, Chinese, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, which means pattern diagnosis, and then I would form my treatment plan. Okay, so what exactly are you looking for when you examine their tongue? So the tongue tells a lot. If, for example, if the tongue is purple and swollen, uh, it's an indication of pain and stagnation. You can't see it here, but this horse's tongue is red because he is a yin deficient horse. Checking its pulses and the pulse uh, changes depending on if there is pain or okay. if there is a deficiency in the animal. So it, it all goes back to trying to get the pattern diagnosis. And once we have the pattern diagnosis, we can balance the horse out through acupuncture and herbs. Okay, and uh, then you just, I mean, you start from head to tail. Go head over to tail, exactly. At this, and now I'm starting my scan, and I just use a pen cap, and I first start where I'm trying to see what the horse's normal reaction is. And then I scan him, and you can see this horse is not reacting at all because I'm going over points, diagnostic points, that he's not painful on. Okay. But then pretty soon you're going to see that I'm going to go over a point. Oh, you see that right yep. there? He reacted. But I would call that a one out of five. And then I go back further along his back, and then he reacts even more. 
So like flinching? He's and flinching. They can vary from, I would say a five out of five is when the horse tries to bite me. He, oh, okay. So there, those were his hip points. He's letting me know that he feels that. Okay. A lot of horses that have back pains, they'll get the lordosis or they'll sway their back. They'll move away from the pressure. Okay. Yes. Um. And so... Basically, I'm looking for any response, and where the response is, it tells me where the pain is. And just because the pain, um, so example, right under these TMJs, that could be he has chronic dental pain, and he's moving away from that pain. I know that, I know this horse very well. But it could also be a sign of ulcers, so I would take that into account, and then move on to other spots that might show ulcers, and so not so the point where he reacts is not necessarily where the pain may be. Ex that's exactly. I'm glad you asked that. That's exactly right. Okay, and that is obviously something you learned at school. Is what points signal where the pain is? Exactly. I'm really glad you asked that. Exactly. Okay, and um, for the most part, is that the way it is? That one spot equals a pain in a different body part or area, or is it? It depends. Okay. I love that answer. It depends because you can have a horse that has chronic <clears throat> saddle uh, or a saddle fit problem uh -huh. and his entire back is palpating sore. Well, that's a saddle problem. Yeah. That doesn't mean that <laughs> his lung and heart and kidney and everything else is infected. It just means he has bad, bad uh, saddle fit. Okay. On the other hand, um, you can have horses that are reacting in... Um, in okay. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Okay. Good. Um, okay, so this is your first step, is to go over these horses, yes. and especially a horse that you've not seen for the first time. Exactly. Uh, I ex look at these horses this way every time. Every time. Yes. Okay. Just so, um, And then do you document and chart Absolutely. where that horse is hurting? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and so what would your next step then be after scanning your horse? I would plan my treatment plan and then usually I would go with uh, first would be dry needle acupuncture and it's not a typical needle it is not hollow it's blunt and um. I would insert uh, in specific areas for to give the horse um, give me permission to let me continue the acupuncture uh, process and then depending on where it, what problem the horse had, then I would move on with the acupuncture. How does the horse typically react to you coming in, uh, first palpating them or scanning them? Are they wary of it? Do they show part, any signs of that? Part of the whole traditional Chinese veterinary medicine is horse's personality. And just like humans, horses have different personalities. Mm -hmm. So depending on the horse's personality and depending on, um, for example, the horse with a really big leg. His, he was so depressed and weak, he did not care how many needles stuck, I stuck in him the first couple times. But once he got his uh, energy back and his normal personality, he was a fire, by the way, <laughs> he, he let me know by uh, moving away and swatting as if he was swatting at flies. But generally, the horses, the needles are so small, they don't even feel them go in. Really? Yes. Okay. So how do you know where to start and place their needles? By going to the school. <laughs> <laughs> by learning. Yes, okay. so it, you have to come up with a plan and you want to balance the horse. So I'm going to, if I have, just for example, a horse with back pain, I'm going to treat locally. Then I'm going to mm -hmm. treat influential points, which means points that influence the back but that aren't necessarily on the back. Okay. And then I want to balance the horse out by having points on the back and the front end. Okay, and those are all dictated by meridians, correct? Yes, and the meridians, the best way to describe it, there's 14 of them, 12 paired, and they're like the interstate system. So if I said bladder 28, well, it's actually part of 840 that runs along Nashville. Okay. And so it goes from the eye to the hind end, and if you have blockage on 840 and you want to clear it, you can put a point in it near his eye or his hind foot and it'll clear that blockage. Okay, and is, are those meridians the same on every horse? Yes. You know where they are? Yes. Okay, just because you know? Just because I had to learn them and um, when I say that the, the meridians are the same on every 
point on every horse, but like I said, there are Ashi points, which are the trigger points, so those could be different on different horses. But the meridians, yes, they are all the same on all horses. Okay. Miniature horses, draft horses. Okay. And then when you say blockage, now I know a lot of this that we're talking about acupuncture is really hard to fully explain. Right. Is it a blockage of energy, a blockage of feeling? I mean, what, what is that blocking? So my best way to describe it is you can have a deficiency that's a blockage. So if you have a car driving on the highway and it's a 70-year-old <coughs> man in a 70-year-old car and he's going really slow and everyone behind him wants to go faster so they feel that pain, so that blockage, as soon as you remove that 70-year-old man, the energy is able to flow. Okay. And hopefully relieve pain. And hopefully relieve at pain. A sight. Exactly. Okay, um, now let's see. So we've decided that our horse is in pain. We've decided that acupuncture may be the best um, therapy. So let's actually watch you doing it and okay. uh, tell us what you're doing in this video. Okay. So this is the permission point. This is by way. This is just letting me, oh, here we are on different points, but I'm just putting the needles in. Okay. And you see me tap them in, and that's just... The horse's skin usually doesn't mind, but if you put some pressure before you put the needles in, the horse doesn't react at all. So I'm putting the needles in specific acupuncture points. Those just uh, to stimulate the stomach. This horse has chronic uh, GI issues. And, um, and you can see that I'm finding the points because there are anatomical locations where the acupuncture points are located. So I'm tapping it in, and then I'm just slowly inserting the acupuncture point. And you can see this horse actually had no one holding its head. Okay. He's just standing there, and here I am. He had blockage all along his bladder channel, so like I was saying, I'm just putting a needle in. And that, is that like kind of... It's the medial canthus of his eye. It's not going anywhere near his eyeball. Okay. And just under the skin? Just then? underneath the skin. Okay. And this is a great point for inflammation and like I said don't do this at home unless you <laughs> know what you're doing because there are very important anatomical uh, tendons ligaments arteries and veins located right there you bet this is a horse uh, that has uh, equine metabolic syndrome and has the typical crusty neck and acupuncture can be used for to decrease the size of the neck and we were just inserting the needles uh, in specific spots uh, along the neck, uh, and so I could hook up the electrodes to stimulate the, the fat to be. Huh. And so how long typically do needles stay in? 20 to 30 minutes, and I usually hook up the electroacupuncture units uh, for 15 minutes. But it, like I said, it all depends on the disease. Those are points used just for chronic heel pain. If okay, you saw which, those. And that's something you see a lot of. See a lot of, yes. Um, okay, so you um, have inserted the needles in there. Do you see a horse react or relax? The or? horse usually relax. They start licking their lips. They will yawn. That is, I love it when they just, <laughs> they, they'll drop their head and they'll yawn like 15 times. Or they'll go to sleep. Uh, and when I hook up the electroacupuncture unit, I know when it's over because the horse will be asleep and then all of a sudden perk up, ears will go up, and you go, okay, we know it's over, so we'll take the needles out. Hmm. All right. And so explain a little bit more um, how you know which of the types of acupuncture to use then. It depends on the condition. So electroacupuncture is great for musculoskeletal pain, and there's different frequencies that you can set the unit at. 20 hertz is beta endorphin release, and that's really good for pain management. If it was an internal medicine case, say uh, diarrhea, you would churn up the frequency um, to 200 hertz. Hmm. So, so many things, I hate to keep saying it, but it, it just, it depends on what the condition is. Okay, is that, were you able to learn um, how to read the horse like that in school, or is it just experience that it's, teaches you? It's both. I mean, it's kind of like even vet school. You come out of vet school, and you probably have more knowledge in your brain than you ever will. Yeah. But it's not until you get out there and do it, and you see the response, till you really know. 
okay, this is what the horse is doing. This is how he reacted. This is what I have to do next time. Okay. Yeah. Um, are people really aware of acupuncture, or is this? Do you feel like it's growing in popularity? I definitely think it's growing in popularity. Just in my class alone, I want to say there was over 130 veterinarians from, like I said, around the world and the United States. Within the Central Tennessee area, I know there's veterinarians who specifically work on small animals and okay. large animals. Um, so. The best clients are the ones who've had acupuncture themselves. I've had it on yeah. myself. I highly recommend it. Because so much of it is hard to explain. So you, if you feel it yourself, then you can understand yeah. what your horse is feeling? Exactly. Okay. Well, I guess a lot of us are going to have to go get acupuncture. But you wouldn't necessarily go get acupuncture unless there was something wrong. Exactly. Okay. So hopefully you don't need acupuncture. But if you do, um, then you can experience it and kind of better understand what your horse is feeling. Right. And a lot of times it's best in conjunction with some other treatments that you're using for your horse. Absolutely, 100%. There are very few times where I will only use acupuncture. Okay. Most of the time I'm using my Western conventional veterinary medicine in conjunction with acupuncture. Okay. And those two modalities together are what's best for the horse. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but Megan is going to stick around and we're going to continue our discussion on equine acupuncture. So we'll be right back after this. Thanks for coming back to Horse Talk Live. Our show today is all about equine acupuncture and we have an expert with us, with us, Dr. Megan Wintermeyer. Um, Dr. Wintermeyer, if somebody's just joining us, give us a brief overview of what acupuncture really is. Acupuncture is one of the modalities in traditional Chinese veterinary medicine where you use acupuncture needles to stimulate acupuncture points to balance a horse and heal the, uh, the horse through, um, I don't, through, uh, I don't know how else to say it. But, yeah. Uh, through using these needles on the correct point. Exactly. Thank okay. You. So what, you know, we've, we know that there are these points that that really matter, that means something, can't just go sticking. Right. What exactly about those points make it an acupuncture point? So the acupuncture points are typically areas of concentrated mast cells, free nerve, er free nerve endings, and arterioles. And when you stimulate that point, it sends signals to the brain to release hormones, to balance a horse and to treat an area. So that's why I was saying you could stimulate an acupuncture point on the back uh, along the, la the last rib to mm -hmm. heal problems with the stomach. Okay, so how would you know, like are the stomach problems something that you as a veterinarian have diagnosed or is it something that you can, you have picked up on through your scan? Both, I've done both. I've had horses that had Chronic weight loss problems uh, were very irritable, and just as a regular conventional veterinarian, you might have in the back of mind ulcers. Yeah. But then when I scanned the horse, all of what I would call the ulcer points lit up. And when I say lit up, it meant that the horse reacted to them. Okay, so it was giving you a sign of was, pain. Was trying to bite me or was reactive, was doing the paniculus response where their muscles move really fast. So ulcers is something we've talked a lot about on this show because a lot of performance horses, a lot of performance horses suffer from ulcers. Um, a lot of times because of the unnatural way that we feed them, all the hauling, the stress that goes into training. So um, if it, how can acupuncture help ulcers when it's like a man-made problem? So acupuncture can help balance the horse, but if I had a horse that had ulcers and it was either through scoping the horse or through scanning the horse, mm -hmm. I would recommend either herbs, and there's a great one called Stomach Happy, or the only FDA-approved product is GastroGuard. Mm -hmm. I would recommend the owner uh, start those two therapies. In, uh, in together? In, either or, or, okay. or together in conjunction with acupuncture because you can stimulate like I said, the mm -hmm. stomach, and in the Chinese uh, veterinary medicine, the spleen actually controls the entire digestive tract. So I would tonify or strengthen those organs through acupuncture. Okay, 
So those organs would be functioning better in order to yes. help the other. I know it sounds Problem crazy. Is. But the other thing is, is that you can balance the horse and maybe this horse has ulcers because it's stressed out all the time. So maybe behavior modification with acupuncture, which there are different points that you can use or and or herbal therapy to balance the horse so he's not so stressed so then he wouldn't okay. develop the ulcers. Okay, so what are some behavioral issues that you do see and that you can help? I've had emergency acupuncture sessions where horses that were just plum, nasty, aggressive stallions um, that would leap out of the trainer's hands and try to attack any horse next to it. That's a pretty severe aggressive mm -hmm. problem. So there's a point that's behind the ear called An Shen that you can do aqua acupuncture in an upcoming video, we'll see an example of that. Uh, there's Dafeng Men, horses that are just plum crazy. <laughs> it's at the forelock, there's three points that you can do. It's called gold, ble gold bead implantation, or you can place surgical staples there. Really? There's points in the ear that you can use. Um, and in conjunction, once you have that pattern diagnosis, once you know why they're having the behavioral problem, you can prescribe the correct herb to help those horses. So why they're having a behavior, is the behavior usually from pain? It can be from pain, but it can also be because of their personality. Uh, maybe they had a training issue that has quote unquote blown their mind mm -hmm. and they have what's called phlegm firing upward which I don't want to scare anyone away but basically they need to have their mind calm and then once their mind is calm then you can go back on to regular training. Okay so unblocking or just kind of balancing. balancing. I would call it okay. balancing the horse yeah. Okay can alleviate some of those negative behavioral issues. Absolutely. Okay. And then also stimulating those acupuncture points that help with behavioral problems. Okay, and uh, you mentioned the herbs. And so is this something that always goes along with acupuncture, the use of herbs? Or is that just something I like you to call, like? I like to call herbs daily acupuncture. You don't have to use them, uh, but they absolutely help. Okay. So You're going to shorten the number of times that you need to have acupuncture treatments with the addition of herbs. Okay. So name off some conditions that would benefit from herbs. Okay, so the horse that was um, attacking other horses, uh, he had liver cheese stagnation, so there's a product called liver happy. Okay. Uh, the horse who is um, crazy in its stall, not that it's aggressive, but um, say it, it's ready to go to a barrel race and it's just, it cannot calm down beforehand. Mm -hmm. There's one called Shen Calmer. And those two products, they're not going to lose their motor. They're not going to lose their athleticism. Okay. They're just going to calm their mind. If you have a horse that has laminitis, uh, an acute case, I'd put them on Hot Hoof 2. If it's a chronic case, Hot Hoof 1. Um, there's herbs for cancer. There's herbs for kidney problems. There's you name it, there's herbs for it. And basically, uh, a conventional veterinarian can open up the herb book, could, tell, could look for the disease pattern that they have, and you can prescribe the herbs. So they are, this isn't something we can just go to the health food store and... <laughs> no, I wouldn't, because you can, not only can you help a horse with herbs, you can hurt a horse with herbs. You don't want to add a horse who's already hot, hot herbs, or a horse that's already cold, cold sure. herbs. So. And is it, like, do you just put them on their feed, or? Well, it, it depends. There are uh, herbs that are, that you can feed. Okay. There's herbs that help with hoof pain that you just apply to the coronary band. So some topical treatments. So topical treatments, exactly. Okay. And then what about herbs for just general pain instead of using there's, an NSAID? There's a great product called Body Sore that is kind of Robaxin and Butte combined. But... As an aside, you can't use every herb for every horse. There are herbs that will test. So if you have a performance oh. horse, yes. Okay. So this is, you have to work with your veterinarian. Yeah. You can't just call um, up the pharmacy and say, I want this herb. You want to make sure you're on the right herb and make sure that you're 
you're not um, giving a horse, per se, uh, a pregnant horse, mm -hmm. a horse that is a stasis breaker. And because they say that pregnancy is the number one stasis, you wouldn't want to uh, prescribe a horse uh, and then cause a problem. So something that alleviates pain like this, is it going to be safer for, typically, no, when it's the right herb for a horse, you know, there's a lot of problems um, or can be problems with the NSAIDs. Um. Absolutely, absolutely. So with the, if you were thinking of gastric or colonic ulceration, mm -hmm. absolutely, the herbs are going to be a, a great alternative. Okay, and you'll just have to find out if your vet is herb savvy? Exactly. Okay, and the, it, where did you uh, become so Herb savvy? savvy? Yeah. I became herb savvy at the same place that I went to school for acupuncture, the Chi Institute. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so every herb is going to affect every horse different and just... And you're going to want to have the correct diagnosis before you put their, any er horse on an herb. Okay. Just like I wouldn't want to give you phenobarbital if you didn't need it. Yeah. It's the same, yeah. same principle. Okay. So you mentioned laminitis and a lot of folks unfortunately have to deal with this in their horses. Yes. Um, this is obviously again where being a veterinarian is so important um, in that condition. It's a terrible condition for a horse to go through. So how are you using acupuncture in conjunction with conventional medicine to treat laminitis? So laminitis is one of the rare instances where I would use acupuncture on a daily basis. And I would, it's called hemoacupuncture. And you actually uh, use regular needles to okay. let blood out along the coronary band at appropriate acupuncture spots. And it's amazing, you'll see the blood go from brown to the bright red. In addition to that, you can start him on hot hoof too, which is an herbal supplement. Okay. And uh, the four herb salve, which is a pain relief salve that you put on the coronary band, in addition to your normal laminitic protocol, whether it be NSAIDs and DMSO and um, putting them on sand or whatever you normally do as a veterinarian, add to your, your traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. And for the most part, you would see a relief in some pain? Instant, instant pain relief. Okay. And how do you tell with the horse like that? Just physically, you know, like in their can, expression or? You can see in the horse's body expression uh, in the way that they're standing, uh, the horse will start licking its lips, will start yawning, uh, their eyes will become softer. Okay, and yeah. could you use it on the, for laminitis, you know, for all of their feet? Is it? You can. The <coughs> horses that are, typically, the horse usually are only laminic on the front feet, but you absolutely can use it on all four feet. You can use it on horses that have chronic laminitis, horses that have an had a, an acute phase and now are just battling with it on a yeah. chronic basis. Uh, those horses I wouldn't do a daily acupuncture, but you can use it for pain relief. And you can also s support in TCVM, the liver controls the hooves, so you could tonify the liver really? to, help, yes, okay. to help support the feet. Okay, and so where are the liver points then that you're... It depends. You okay. can, there are points on the back that you can use. So okay, mm -hmm. to enhance the liver function, to support the liver. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then in turn, and your... exactly. And there's a great point that's for stagnation is liver three. So you can either use bl uh, liver association points on the bladder channel, okay. or you can use liver specific points like liver three that's good for stagnation, which is on the hind leg. So would you kind of experiment then to see which of those liver points would best benefit that laminitic horse? Or do you, like how would you know which horse would benefit from? I would have my plan. I would put all of the needles <coughs> in that I thought the horse needed. Then I would stand back and think, is there anything else? If I'm not getting the response that I would expect, I would think, I would think to myself, is there anything else? And from there, I would change my course. But usually, after a while, you just know what you need to do. Okay. Well, it's so interesting. We're going to take another quick break, but finish talking about acupuncture with Dr. Megan Wintermeyer when we come back from this break, so stick around. 
Thanks for coming back to Horse Talk Live. We're here with Dr. Megan Wintermeyer, and we're talking about equine acupuncture and how she's integrated it into her veterinary practice. So you're 100% on the road ambulatory in your uh, practice, right, self relief. And so tell us what an average day for you would be and how much acupuncture you do on a daily basis. I would say that acupuncture comprises about 80% of my practice. So on a typical day, I could have all acupuncture, mm -hmm. or I can have acupuncture, and they can say, hey, doc, while you're here, would you mind yeah. doing? Uh, the thing about acupuncture is, is it does take a little bit of time. So from getting the history to putting the points in to setting up the electroacupuncture, if you're doing electroacupuncture, it will take uh, an hour to an hour and a half. And I tend to talk a lot, <laughs> so maybe even two hours. So you would want to give your, yourself enough time. So how many of your patients are you seeing on a regular basis, or do you go back? So there, it, it all depends. There are some horses that I see weekly. There are some horses that I see every two weeks. There are some horses that are out of state that they bring to me okay. that I'm not going to see except for every month or every couple months. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. so you give people kind of a plan after you see them initially what you think the horse is going to need to follow up with. Exactly. And every horse is different. So it might be one treatment and they're done. It might be three treatments and they're done. Or it might be, hey, we really need to do this every few months. Or, hey, your horse has a skin condition that usually starts in the spring. Let's start planning for it in the wintertime so that we can get ahead of it. And so what would a skin condition be that acupuncture could help? So the, the hives, this from insect bite hypersensitivity, um, hmm. would be a really good example of that. Okay, and so... Um, how is the acupuncture actually helping? I would say it's more that, well, it's a combination of acupuncture and herbs. Okay. Because you're, you're, the lung is, controls the skin, so you're tonifying the lung with the acupuncture, and then you're getting ahead of their inflammatory response with the herbs. Really? That's yes. so interesting. Okay. Yes. Uh, we talked a lot about laminitis. What about navicular, which is another problem a lot of people have to go through. Yeah, so with acupuncture, you're not going to cure the disease, but you're going to help with the pain. So navicular um, horses with contracted heels, those are great problems to, uh, to help the pain of the horse. But you're not going to actually change the navicular bone with acupuncture. Okay, you'll or just help provide relief. Exactly. Okay, which, you know, obviously is what that horse would want. So Exactly. Um, and then... Like the contracted heels and maybe some other foot conditions, do you help people to decide on like some other changes that need to be made in that horse? Absolutely. People, I've had cases where people have brought a horse to me that they wanted me to fix a horse with acupuncture, but I just told them, I said, I will acupuncture your horse. I will help them with the pain relief, but we have to do chewing, shoeing changes mm -hmm. in order to correct the problem. Okay, and then uh, some other leg issues. Um, I know my horse had some soft tissue issues a while ago. Um, so uh, acupuncture is great for bow tendons. Uh, the, if you get in there, the, if they're acute, it's even a better prognosis with acupuncture. Um, soft tissue injuries, not just the distal limb, but on a lot of horses that are asked to use their hind end a lot. Mm -hmm. The rainers, the cutters, you name it, they, we ask them to collect. They have a lot of soft tissue hip pain, and acupuncture is one of the few modalities that actually helps that pain. Okay, so you can relieve some of the, the pain by, are you stimulating, like, for, like, an acute it, uh, injury? Yes. Is it healing it quicker? Yes. Okay. Yes. You can actually, there's... I almost wish that I can had had a video of it, but to use acupuncture with a bow tendon, you can see that it helps the bow tendon he heal quicker. Are uh, you is that like at the actual site of injury, or you, you would go going above somewhere? and below? And then, so for another example, for combination, if you had a soft tissue injury, say it was infected, I'm not going to just acupuncture it. I'm going to have your horse. I'm going to tell you to put on antibiotics. And then I would call, do what's called surround the dragon, which is surround the area with the acupuncture needles and okay. to stimulate the body for healing process okay. in that area. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Well, let's watch the last uh, bit of video of you and your um, work in treating horses to learn more about the different types 
okay. that you choose to uh, to use. Okay, so this is the horse. Uh, this I'm hooking up the electrodes, and there's um, two wires that will go to, and eventually you'll see the electro acupuncture unit, and that's where you can set the intensity in the hertz uh, depending on what the condition is. So, um, so this, so not that this is specifically for it, but horses that have wobblers, acupuncture is great for it. Horses that have laryngeal hemiplasia, those are both neck problems. Those are not that those specific points would treat those conditions, yeah. but acupuncture is great for those conditions. And I'm just basically, uh, it takes me a few minutes. I have to hook the electrodes up, um, and I just drape them over the horse's back until I get them all on. And then you'll see I will put them in the electroacupuncture unit. So have you yourself felt the electric? I, I treat myself all the time. It's illegal for me to treat any other human except for myself. And what does it feel like? If it's amazing. It's uh it feels just like a, an electric pulse going okay. through. And if you've ever had back pain, um, I do have a confession I've treated my husband. He calls it, <laughs> he calls it WD-40 for his back. So for lum lower back pain, uh, electroacupuncture. And then it's almost like after you've had it done, you keep waiting for the pain to reoccur, but it doesn't. And then should it reoccur, then you just do another treatment. Exactly. And that's, so that's on Shen. That's a behavioral point. And I just, I hope you can see uh, this horse kind of, he's a thoroughbred. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit, you can see how much quieter he is in his eyes and softer. And there's electro, or sorry, that's aqua acupuncture to stimulate for appetite. So you're actually injecting. I am injecting, it's a combination, it's diluted B12, I'll be honest with you. You don't have to use B12, uh, you're just, and what that does is you're stimulating the acupuncture point over a longer period of time with aqua with acupuncture. That, uh -huh. that liquid, okay, mm -hmm. and so you were just said there was some B12 in there, other types of liquid that you may use? Yes, there, I'm sure other practitioners use different substances, some may use saline. Okay. Uh, you don't want to do anything that's going to harm the acupuncture point. You just want it to basically stimulate the acupuncture point over a longer period of time. Okay, and so that one was to stimulate um, appetite, yes. right? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, what are some cases that would a ben horse may not be eating correctly? And exactly, if you not? have a, a geriatric, or it doesn't even have to be a geriatric horse that is inappetent, uh, you can um, stimulate that point. Uh, there's a few other points to stimulate for the appetite. You ha one of them is underneath the tongue, uh, and huh. unfortunately you have to grab the tongue and go underneath, so I rarely use that one. Yeah. Are there ever cases when you need to sedate a horse in order to treat them? Or? Actually, that's a great question. You should not sedate a horse because it interrupts the acupuncture process. Okay. So and I, naturally they get kind of sedate right. after. If there is a cantankerous horse that I need to put a point in and he's not letting me, I may use a twitch. And by the way, a twitch is nothing more than stimulating an acupuncture point. Really? Yes. So explain that a little bit more. So there are two points on the, the nose. Mm -hmm. And when you twist the nose, yeah. you're actually stimulating those points. So the horse isn't going, ah, 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 ah. He's actually going, oh. Really? Good. Yes. I had no idea. Yes, and if you think about it, on Shen is behind the ear, and if you twist the ear, yeah. which I never let yeah. my assistant do, but you're actually stimulating the acupuncture point. So it's not pain that you're inflicting. It, well, it, yes, that's debatable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't talk about it then. Um, okay, well, we've known that you are a vet, and then you decided to add acupuncture into your um bag of tricks and now you're even continuing your education further with chiropractic and that goes back to uh, dr simpson and when i saw him do uh, the two modalities together acupuncture and chiropractic it's amazing what you can do for musculoskeletal problems what would you use first the chiropractic or the acupuncture use both use the combination of the two so a horse, and it depends on the horse, a horse that you're trying to adjust and you want muscle relaxation, you might do uh, acupuncture first. If it's a horse that's just, he's painful because he's out of alignment, you will do chiropractic first and then see how he is. Is he still painful? Does he still need that acupuncture treatment? 
Okay, so in this case, if somebody just really didn't know what was exactly wrong, yeah. they can just call you and you can I diagnose. Can, I can figure it out for you. Okay, so what are some common musculoskeletal problems that people will have to deal with or do deal with? So, commonly, the horses that have to collect from the back end, whether it's a cutter, reiner, dressage horse, hunter, jumper, they have stifle hock problems. Acupuncture will De or will increase the length of time that those injections are good. And the other problem I might have already said, and I'm sorry if I repeat it, but a lot of times you'll inject those joints and they still have back pain. So you'll come back and that's the time when acupuncture will really shine. Okay. Again, just... So, so if, you, if you do your hock and your joints and yeah. your stifle injections and your horse is still a little off, that's when you can do your acupuncture. Because one problem... Leads to, because the, the way that the horse c carries himself mm -hmm. when he has hock and stifle pain causes that soft tissue hip pain. And so by acupuncture, we're treating that soft tissue hip pain. The whole problem. All right. Well, horses are going to love that. Um, if people have questions, we want to let you know that uh, Dr. Wintermeyer takes questions on her Facebook page, and they can just type in Silver Leaf Equine. Yes, and you can call, text, email. I'm available. Okay. Um, you'll also be hosting webinars, is that true? Yes, that's true. Okay, so if folks have any questions, which I'm sure, um, I know that I'm still full of questions, and um, you're, well, you're happy to answer all these questions. I love so talking about acupuncture, so please, okay. anytime. Well, we uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule, and I'm excited to have you out to look over my horses and see if they can benefit from acupuncture. Visit Dr. Wintermeyer on her Facebook page or silverleafequine.com for all the information on equine acupuncture. Um, as always, we want to uh, invite you to give us suggestions for Horse Talk Live on our Facebook page and uh, also at horses at rfdtv.com. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Until next time, we'll see you around the barn. Dr. Wintermeyer, thanks again for being here. Thank you. Us. I had a great time. All right. Thanks, everybody.